Hi, and welcome to another free teaching Thursday. This is when I jump into this Facebook group live um, and I give you some free training or some free teaching. For the next couple weeks, I'm going to be going inside one of the Bible study workbooks that I've created and show you exactly the process I go through um, to dig deeper into scripture. These workbooks were created so that you do one day every day of the week or sometimes five to six days in a seven day week. But instead, we're gonna take it slow and we're gonna do one day per week for the next couple of weeks. It's just a really good way to help you dig into God's word and to see how simple it can be just to take a few minutes every day and answer some questions and just learn more and be encouraged. So the workbook that we're gonna be going through is this one, it's called Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. It is free for you right now to use, so if you don't have your copy, you can click in the link in the description or in the link in the comments. Sign up for this workbook, it'll come straight to your inbox, print it off, and join me as we go through it together. So are you ready? Let's jump in. Make sure to scan this QR code to grab your free workbook so that you can follow along. The theme of these three weeks has been the Lord's name is Emmanuel, the God being with us. And you'll notice that today is a day, usually in my workbooks, I, I, there's days one through five, sometimes days one through six. And then in some studies, I've given you some extra verses. So I usually, you see, I say study on your own. I'll give you a list of verses. Some have more, some have less. This one has two. And then I'll give you some questions you can ask yourself. And then you have this piece of extra piece of paper for you to take some notes on. We're going to do this one verse at a time. We're going to start with Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. Now Zephaniah is at the towards the end of the Old Testament. It's right before Haggai and after Habakkuk in with the prophets. Okay, if you need to use your concordance at the front of your Bible, that's totally fine. Um, because sometimes these books like to hide, and even if you know where it is in your Bible, it can still be tricky to find. So, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, it says, The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. What I like to do is just write out the verse that I've read. And then I look at these questions, and I only want to answer a couple. So one of my favorites is, what do these verses teach us about God? So when we go back to Zephaniah, we say, we learn that he's in our midst, and that he rejoices over us. Not only that, but he will quiet us, and again, rejoice. So this is, I want to say, times two. So anytime in scripture something is repeated, it's just to emphasize the point or just to show that it's important. So here in one verse, we see twice that the author uses the word rejoices over us. What I love about this is the author giving us an emotion that the Lord feels. So God rejoices. So this is a God who sings, who's happy, and it's over us because of us. That is so cool that we impact God and how he feels. How neat is that? that something I do or something I do say or something I think has the ability to bring God this feeling of rejoicing. To me, that's amazing that he can feel these things about us, that he's not a distant God. He sees us. He's in our midst. He sees what we do. He rejoices us. And then lastly, he quiets us. To me, this means like a decrease in anxiety. Calm my soul. Have you guys ever felt that? You've been feeling anxious or tired or worried and you go to the Lord 
and you don't even barely have to say anything and suddenly you read his word and it's just like this balm to your heart and you start breathing better and the peace just goes over you this is what he's doing with his spirit quieting us the next verse in our extra here is first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 I'll read it for you. So turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and it says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? It continues, If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? Yesterday, or one of these days this week, we talked about God's presence with us in the New Testament and how the Holy Spirit dwells in us. In the Old Testament, people were not filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit would come into the holies of holies in the temple one time per year, and only the high priest was allowed to be in the presence of the Lord. And now we are the temple. Okay, so we house God. And I often think of the amount of times a priest did not enter the holies of holies in the right way, and that they died because they did not obey. So we have the honor and the privilege of being with God all the time. But the challenge is, are we upkeeping the temple? If this was the, New, the Old Testament, would God be happy with the way the temple was? Or would we be struck dead because we're not approaching him properly? Now, I don't want you to have this as an anxiety point, striking us dead the way we approach God does not happen in the New Testament, but is this challenge to remember the importance the Israelites had on the temple, to think about the upkeep and the rules and to coming into the presence of God, to remember that we are in God's presence all the time with his Holy Spirit. And so how are we upkeeping where he sits? Is it clean? Are we holy? Are we asking for repentance? What is the condition of our heart? And so this to me is challenging. So two verses, very different, all extra in the comments. I'd love for you to tell me a word, a verse, an idea, a thought, a picture, whatever that stood out to you and what you've learned to encourage one another. For me, it's the reminder that we are the Lord's temple. And so it's something that we need to remember that is a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. That it's up to us to tidy the temple, to keep it clean, to keep short accounts with the Lord, because that is where the Lord resumes and he deserves to be in a well-kept temple. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, if not, if anything I've ever said in any of these verses, these teachings you have questions about, please let me know in the Facebook group, in the comments. Um, I'm happy to answer them as best I could. Thank you so much for joining me, and I can't wait to see what you've learned in this study. Here's a quick Bible study tip. Always look for ways you can apply scripture to your life. So anytime you're reading scripture, you want to see, are there any th thought patterns you can change? Are there sins for you to confess? Actions to stop or to start. Every single time you read scripture, ask yourself at least one of these questions and then go and do it. I hope this helps. If you'd enjoyed this Bible study workbook, then I invite you to join the Christian Growth Hub. It is a growing online membership for Christian women who want to grow in their faith with the support and resources they need without adding to your to-do list or feeling overwhelmed. So when you join the Christian Growth Hub, you get access to weekly Bible study workbooks, training on how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible, and how to apply it to your life. Not only that, but you get access to the Christian Growth Hub Facebook group where you can connect with other Christian women who have the same desire as you, ask for prayer requests, get some training, and just connect with me and other members. So join us today. Go ahead and scan the QR code and I can't wait to see you inside.